Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Okay, we were checking out the transmission and seeing if there was any problems at all with the differential units. Now I've got here some backlash in the diff, or what supposedly be, could possibly be backlash. Perhaps it's something else. So what we've done is removed the diff and had a quick look to make sure that nothing's damaged, uh, nothing's hanging out. What we will need to start remembering now in these tutorials is using the proper name because this diff is not actually a diff, it's a final drive unit. Okay, the differential unit is in there, all right, which is in the housing which the crown wheel is bolted to. So we'll have to remember to use the correct terminology. Okay, so uh, this part here is the uh, differential housing and the differential is actually four gears and a pin. This pin here causes problems because it snaps on the front axle sometimes. This is why sometimes it's better to put a four pin diff in. Okay, well, I'll show you something else as well. If it's not broken on the housing itself, where the pin goes through, it's held on by circlips both ends. Now, the housing wears and it goes oval, so it's worth checking by moving it up and down, backwards and forwards, to make sure that it is not overloid. If it is, then the housing is kaput. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to remove the pinion housing casing with the final drive assembly and refit another one. Compared to the rear axle, the front axle is a lot more work. You have to strip out the CV joint and the half shafts out of the swivel housing. Okay, so this is more involved. Now, the first thing we need to do is remove the oil. And then we can get on taking this and putting it on axle stands and stripping out the components. You'll probably see in this video that the axle stands on the front axle look like this with one under the diff. However, the chassis is supported with two five-turn axle stands. If you're supporting the weight of the vehicle with axle stands, with the wheels removed on the front, they should be positioned as such. Right, so you can go ahead and pull things to bits, which is taking the pads out of the calipers, removing the calipers themselves off the housing, knocking the drive flange off the hub, and this can be a little bit awkward, and then removing the hub complete with a brake disc and bearings like so. Next thing to do is remove the bolts that hold the stub shaft on, tap it with a soft hammer and let the oil out of the housing. Now you'll notice here there's quite a bit of oil that comes out. This one's a messy job, okay. This is one shot grease, so one shot grease will have to go back in. The benefit here is that while you're stripping this down, you're also going to be refreshing the oil that's in the CV joint housing or the swivel pin housing. Okay, I'm just going to let that drain and then pull the half shaft and the CV joint out together. Okay, so the off side or driver side in England has a short half shaft and on the other side this has a longer half shaft. You'll see that in a second when it's pulled all the way through. What you'll notice here, there is nowhere near as much oil in the housing as there should be, and we were already suspicious of this. Okay, so next thing to do is to remove the track rod, okay, by knocking off both track rod ends and getting the track rod out of the way. This will stop it being bent when the final drive unit is taken out. Right, the next thing to do is to remove the prop shaft from the flange and then we can get on and undo the ring of bolts that holds the housing to the axle casing. Okay, this 14mm spanners or 916 spanners, undo the prop shaft and get it out of the way. Next thing to do is undo the ring of bolts that's holding the casing on. These again are 14mm or 916 AF. Right, you can use a chisel just to break the seal and to push the casing up just a little bit. Um, once that's undone, you can use something like a pry bar to push it all the way out. What you've got to remember is this unit is actually quite heavy. 
Now I'm just cleaning a bit of silicon off here, trying to get a little bit of leverage there. And yes, I'm using a hammer, which I shouldn't do on a plastic handle. However, when you're stuck in the middle of somewhere, you have to use the tools that are available, right? Anyway, you've got leverage to push it so far along the studs and then lift it out and put it on the floor gently okay don't get this gritty because these components are still worth something even if the diff's knackered the next thing to do is to clear up the mating faces and what you'll find is that it will be rtv silicon that's on here use a sharp scraper something to get it off and do the whole lot before you clean it with brake cleaner all right you want it oil a clean surface first so you can put your silicon back on there okay so that's brake cleaner wipe it clear get the oil off next thing you can do is then put a fine bead of a silicon sealant all the way around now what I usually do is put a loop around each one of the bolts here okay that way you know that the oil is not going to seep through where the bolts are okay something like that once it's a continuous seal can then fit your final drive unit into place now this is quite heavy I can do it by myself because I'm used to heavy weights if not get somebody to help you lift it in now this is the issue if it's not sitting in properly you got to make sure it slides on all of the studs okay now this is a little bit awkward now I think the problem here is is that there's some sort of smeg in the bolt holes and it's not pushing itself all the way down so using something like the hammer handle to tap it through if not then give it a nice big whack on the side of the casing something like that okay now it's dropped in square so it wasn't sitting square on the studs in the first place once that's done you can then nip up your bolts the torque isn't actually that tight, but I'd advise just nipping it up slightly first, go around the whole lot of the bolts, and then torque them twice. So you make sure you've got all of them. Um, pinion housing to axle casing, that's what that housing is, is 41 Newton meters. Obviously, work is never done, and we found a notchy bearing on the swivel housing here, so that's going to have to be removed and replaced. One thing with the front axles, the swivels, the seals where the half shafts run like to leak and let the grease into the axle. And you can tell by the same colour that it obviously has been doing that. So it's quite an easy job to just pop off the swivels and remove the old seal and put a new seal in its place. Not much effort and it's worth it. And while we're at it, we've put a new um, swivel housing seal in its place as well. Land Rovers suffer from spline wear and this is the CV driving member and this is the driven hub flange, okay? It's worn to a limit. These splines wear and so does this unit. CV joints also wear and you can see by this one with the amount of plane it's got a lot of slag so this is the next thing we're going to cover.